With Andrew Driver, Jana Singleton, one of those seniors from DeSoto, Texas. Transfer from University of Missouri has found a home at U of H. Trying to end her career on the right note. Alongside six other seniors tonight. Here we go from the Carl Lewis International Complex. Houston is in white, Temple is in black. Houston beat. South Florida opened up the conference season, but has not won since. Temple looking for its first win in conference to end the campaign. What will you be watching for early on here, Andrew? I just want to see the two teams that play with some freedom. Obviously, nothing to play for, but it's senior night. Just go and enjoy yourself and put on a, put on a show. Two coaches relatively new in their program, trying to build a foundation for Nick Boquette and Temple. The top here, they've been in a lot of games. They drew with Maryland in the first game of the season. For U of H, under first-year head coach Jaime Frias, beat South Florida to start the home campaign. It seemed like so many possibilities were there, Andrew, but if you look to the schedule today, they had a late chance against SMU, and then a real flat performance against Tulsa and a tough road trip following against Cincinnati and UCF to eliminate the Cougars before senior nights. Yeah, all, all going up to the Tulsa game, it looked like U of H had a great chance, didn't it? They looked like they were definitely the quality to get into the playoffs. And so I know it's a little bit of a disappointment that they're not there, but it's a team that can grow. Just need to um, build on next season now. McClark, one of the seniors building out of the back too long. Alex Whitcraft, you see the seniors' numbers painted on the grass at the Carl Lewis International Complex. Among those, Emma Clark. A lot of single digits. Clark, Singleton, Garza, Freeman, and Gear two through five, each playing their final college game tonight. And you see the others further down the field. Riley Hausler, who's been injured all season. Appeals for offside from Temple. Addie Tate, number 24, and Madison. To Shiara. Gear from distance, off the mark. A goal kick here to Temple. Temple Owls under Nick Boschett. It's a 4-3-3 formation. Burns was the backup goalkeeper to start the year. An injury in the first game of the season saw her brought into the lineup, but a lot of praise for Anderson in midfield and Wallace, the right back. Yeah, they're playing with a 4-3-3. Um, obviously, wants to get a lot of width going forward. Yeah, Temple just needs to, to continue to grow, Don. It's been a difficult season. Um, no, no victories in conference play, so they'll, they'll want to go out on a high. They have something to play for, and obviously, setting up in a 4-3-3 formation, that they're going for it. They're not going to settle for a draw. They want to go and win the game. Cameron Stabline was the fifth-year senior out of Pennsylvania, expected to be the starter. She was injured in the game against Maryland. So Kyla Burns has played the remaining 14 games, very similar to University of Houston. We have Mika Gracia, the returning starting goalkeeper. She was injured in the offseason, opening the door for Haley Woodward. So both these teams, an unexpected starter in goal as Woodcraft pulls it back top of the box. Weehee wide here. Matthews trying to turn. Both players seem to have an opportunity to try their luck from the edge of the box. Yeah, you were just waiting for them to hit, to hit the shot, weren't you? It's, it's very unlike uh, Weehe and Matthews. They've both got good strikes in them. They usually would take the opportunity to hit one there. I think Caitlin Matthews is a little bit lucky to get the free kick. Free kick given to Houston here. Just three minutes in, it's Weehe or Matthews. We've seen some tricky set pieces, some well-taken set piece goals from Houston this season. Matthews, junior from Flower Mound, Texas. Primarily the left-footed option. Weehee the right-footed. It's left for Sam Weehee. Weehee finds the back of the net. What a beautiful, well-taken free kick goal for Sam Weehee and the Cougars jump in front, one nothing. Very similar to a goal we saw from her early in the season, but she's taken this one fantastically well. It's, a, it's from a fair distance, but we know Sam Weehee's got a great strike on her. And she just hits it down the side of the goalkeeper. But what she does is she hits it with such power, it's difficult for the goalkeeper to react. Here it is on target. Good strength. The goalkeeper maybe a little bit upset she didn't get a, a stronger hand onto it. But yeah, Sam Weehy, probably one of the better performers for U of H. And we, we've known for the last two seasons that she has that ability, you know. Cougars, a bright start on senior night. 
Sam Weehy's goal delivers a 1-0 lead. They scored a, she scored a free kick goal against SMU, the 1-1 draw, the last home game, and that's her third of the season. She got off to a good start, scoring at Oklahoma the 1-1 draw. That SMU game, late chances for Adriana Hudson, late twice in the last five minutes, it ended 1-1. And then Houston, as we mentioned, fell flat against Tulsa, went on the road. And the seemingly bright regular season with the win against South Florida quickly faded and now a chance for some consolation tonight. Yeah, um, Sam we should be proud of her performances this year. She, we, we know the ability she has, but two, two highlight reel free kicks is always nice to, to show on the, on the highlight reel and obviously a, a great asset for U of H. We've mentioned how other teams utilize strong strikes like that and I think going into the, the coming season, they'll want to do that with Sam Weehy. Long thrown from Temple. Good pressure in midfield. Nice win from Whitcraft. She immediately looks for Singleton. Temple with a high line to win it back. And when we speak with Jaime Frias before every match, she consistently highlights the midfield three, CC Cross. Not starting tonight, it's senior night, so it's an opportunity for Madison Dishiara to get the start. But Cross has been in there all season with Weehee and Matthews. Yeah, CC Cross has been outstanding um, all season. Good opportunity for Dishiara, who has impressed me this season when she's come off the bench, actually, uh, well, a lot of the time. Well, she even start, started games because she's performed so well. So the U of H, has, they've got a strong squad. We've got a lot of quality players. Long throw in there from Eliza David. David fighting for the second ball. Clearance from Weehee. Whitcraft clearance. Spills on this left side. Brooke Kane with the delivery. It's too far for D'Ambra. Chased down by Anna Race on the far side of the field. Nice turn from Singleton. She has Maddie Gear to her right. It's still Singleton for Houston. Daniel Singleton. It'll be a one-man show all the way to the box, but she ran out of room. Good defending in the end from Temple. Good turn, really good turn from Singleton. And here is the lineup from Jaime Frias. First-year head coach, Woodward, has been the starting goalkeeper all season. Familiar back three, Tate, Clark, and Garza Freeman. Raysa and Whitcraft, the wingback Singleton partner in gear. And really all season, when Houston's at its best, it's been Whitcraft and Raysa as the fulcrum of the offense. The ball has been played in those wide areas. Yeah, they offer the, the width, don't they? Whitcraft and Raysa, they both also have great pace. They, they're really up and down. Um, they, they, they are the out ball, if you would say, that to when U of H is under pressure. But it, it's a difficult shift for them because they've got a lot of work to put in. And you see tonight, Madagia has gone up, up front to, to help out Singleton up there. It's a nice turn. She's in the box. Shot off the defender's shoulder and out for a corner kick. Hit Phoebe Holland on her way in. Good strike. Yeah, good from Risa. When she squares up the defender like that, she's so fast. The defender's got to be very careful. She's got tricky feet and this time got into the box and hit a good shot. It's a good block in the end. Oh, Holland's okay. Either the shoulder or the head of the defender as that shot came in quickly. Holland. Out of Oldham, England, eh? my hometown. Yes, a very familiar place to it. One yeah. your driver. She'll be it's from Oldham. She'll be tough. Driven in by gear. Good coverage from the goalkeeper Kyla Burns, who comes past her post to clear it for another corner kick. Good pre-game introduction there for Phoebe Holland and Andrew Driver. No, oh, nice to see some of them Oldham out here playing soccer. Really good achievement. And there's a header for Clark right at Kyla Burns. It just stayed in the air. It's kind of a windy night, Andrew. That ball just floated above the goal mount for a long time for Emma Clark on senior night. Yeah, it really hung in the air, didn't it? Clark was favorite for it, but it was just the ball hung for that long. There was no pace on the ball for Clark to get a, a strong header on it. In the end, good save from the goalkeeper. 
But that, that shows you what Emma Clark brings from corners and set pieces. She's, she's a big target and she attacks the ball very well. Now, right, Andrew, put your Visitors Bureau hat on for Oldham England. Give us a quick summary of your hometown. Oldham England is famous for tech, the textile industry back in the day. It's fallen on um, harder times now a little bit. Um, but one, Oldham Athletic going to, to soccer, Oldham Athletic were one of the founding members of the Premier League, which I bet a lot of people wouldn't know. Unfortunately, they're not even in any league now. And just 25 years ago or so, Oldham at the top. Here's Houston looking for a second. Long diagonal here for Singleton. Singleton peeking to her left. Singleton takes her time. Jenna Singleton for Houston. Pulls it to her left. Low strike is through and in on senior night. A golden member for Jenna Singleton. Two nothing Cougars. No, it's a great way to finish your college career, isn't it? This U of H team, we know they haven't scored in a few weeks. They've started this game in the right manner. This time, it was the, the goal for me is all comes from Maddie Gear opening the ball out to Singleton. I love it when she pulls into these wide areas and runs into the box. A big smile on her face because she's done brilliantly. She's come inside. She's squared, squared the defender up, cutting on the left foot. And it's not the strongest finish, but if you put it on target, you get goals. Two nothing Cougars. A free kick goal from Sam Weehy and then Jana Singleton with her second goal of the season. She scored at Sam Houston at the end of August. And make that her fourth goal, I beg your pardon. Scored against HBU as well and then scored in the 2 1 win against South Florida that opened what seemed like a very promising start to the conference season. So she bookends the conference season, a goal against South Florida and a goal tonight against Temple. Yeah, and a lot of the time I think she's played very central and it's hard for her to get, I think her, uh, the highlight of, her, of Jada, Jana Singleton is when she pulls out into the wide areas and uses her athleticism. You saw her in that situation, she's so dangerous when she attacks the defender coming out from out to in. When you stay central in a 3-5-2, you, you kind of don't see as much of the ball as you would like to. Back all the way to Kyla Burns. Temple trying to build out of the back. Taylor Garza Freeman in her second season with Houston, her final game tonight, fifth year senior. Earns a throw in. She's had a great career, short time, but great contributions for the Las Vegas native who transferred to Houston from Utah State. Full time left back last year has been a center back partner of Emma Clark this season. Yeah, she's been outstanding, hasn't she? Pretty much ever present. Just defensively so strong, aggressive in the tackle, doesn't let anything pass her. And she's a real leader. Her and Emma Clark together would be a huge miss at the back for U of H. Long strike from the edge of the box, handled by Haley Woodward, redshirt freshman from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Started every game this season to the injury to Miki Gracia, the returning starter. There's a diagonal, there's the offside flag. Singleton looking for her second of the first half. Yeah, I think the right decision from the linesman in the end. It was a fantastic ball over the top for Singleton to run onto. But just, she doesn't need to do that. She's got the pace anyway. She doesn't need to, to get a, a head start. But the right idea. Team leading fourth goal of the season for Houston. Jacqueline Metz is the referee tonight. Jared Tackle, Emrahan Demaran, and Habib Bouchman are the assistant referees. Player down for Temple. Back to her feet. Royce and McGovern on a double in Ireland. Restart coming for Temple and Phoebe Holland. <laughs> Old the native restarts. That's a decent ball into the box. Nice diagonal, headed clear. Adishiera. 
Weehy with the nifty touch. And now Houston will try and break. This year off to the left for Raysa. Singleton another willing run. Good space from Raysa. Inside for Sam Weehy. She does so well, doesn't it? Just the pace going forward, but the, the smartness to cut inside. You don't have to go 100 mile an hour all the time. Just down there, another good ball in. Singleton turns to her right. No trouble that time for Kyla Burns out of Ruby, New York. Kingston High School sophomore goalkeeper. She had to fill in after the unexpected injury to the fifth year senior Cameron Stabline. And you see the numbers there, 86 saves before tonight. Yeah, she's had a busy season, hasn't she? Was that average out 10 saves a game? That's, um, that's a fair amount of work for a goalkeeper. All the players standing on senior night for Houston, a two nothing lead. It's a rare comfortable lead. All these conference games for the Cougars have been tight, apart from the Tulsa home game, which was so surprising. The, the Tulsa home game kind of came out of nowhere, didn't it? They just came off the SMU game where it could have easily been a win. I think we mentioned earlier that there was an opportunity at the end of the game to, to win it for U of H and how different the season could have been if it had gone in. Well, we look to the scores. They beat South Florida 2-1. That was a really impressive performance. Houston went ahead through Jana Singleton. South Florida quickly fought back. And then a well-taken set-piece goal put home by Maddie Bowers. Gave Houston its first win over South Florida in a long time. Then Houston went to ECU. ECU started out red hot. Houston lost 1-0. And then at Memphis, another what could have been moment. They led 2-0 in the 85th minute. Memphis scored twice in the final five minutes for a 2-2 draw. So that's a moment, Andrew, where you think two points were left on the table. Then the SMU game, another game where it was 1-1, chances at the end, we've talked about it. And then a dry spell after a long layoff, Tulsa, Cincinnati, UCF. Houston has not scored in the last three games before tonight. Yes, but you add those four points on and you win the three points tonight, you're close to, to get, you're probably gonna make the playoffs, aren't you? It's the, it's the small margins make huge differences over the season. And I think U of H will look at that. I think they'll look at the, the season with pride, but maybe look at a little bit of what, what could have been. Similarly for Temple, not enough goal scoring. Three players with two goals at the top of their goal scoring chart. But very competitive in the American. The last few games losing 2-1, 2-0, 2-0, and 3-1. They're in a lot of these games, but yet to get enough goal scoring production to really dictate the pace of the game. Here's Whitcraft taking the space, top of the box, Alec Whitcraft over the bar. What a fine season from Alex Whitcraft, the freshman from Grapevine, Texas. She's been outstanding for me, absolutely outstanding. She eased her way into it the first couple of games, but since then, just uh, it's been, a, I think, a bright spot for U of H, up and down the right-hand side, so fast, so good on the ball. You saw her quality there, just cutting inside, having the confidence to go in for a strike. And um, I don't know her career progression, but she's played in this right wing back area. I don't know if she's been more of a defender or an attacker in the time, but she re she's been outstanding, both defending and attacking. Well, Jaime Frias told me earlier this season she's always been a defender. It's kind of cool to see it an attacking defender for a long time. Oftentimes it's a converted forward or winger that's moved back. And she's been a defender for a while now. Yeah, and what her and Racer give is it gives the, the team the opportunity to add more central midfielders because they, ha they have two players with, who have the ability in the wide areas. They have the pace and the, the stamina to go up and down for 90 minutes of a game. Not in that wide wing back area, it's hard to find players that can do that. We saw the sub for Temple. Gabriella Johnson, she's a senior from Mays Landing, New Jersey. Game on for Alexa Sweats. 2-0, Houston leading. Goals from Sam Weehy and Janice Singleton. There's Singleton with her back to goal. Lays it back. Raysa, long touch. It's a goal kick, good pressure from Raysa. Goal kick won by Jessica Wallace, one of the stars of this Temple team. Wallace, sophomore from Bowie, Maryland.
Here's Jessica Wallace. Trying to build through the spine at Temple under head coach Nick Boquette. Transition game a key for him in our conversation earlier about this Temple season. He said in college soccer, it's a game of transition. And when you have 11 players thinking about the offense and the ball turns over, getting them to quickly think about the defense or anticipating the turnover and getting the shape into a better defensive state is something they're trying to work upon. Yeah, when people say tra transition, you automatically just think going forward, don't you? But transition really is both plays. It's difficult to coach a team to go end to end when you lose the ball react it's that first three seconds after you lose the ball that makes all the difference and if your team isn't doing that you've got to find ways to coach it matthews high and wide after a good run again from race up to the left side houston really challenging these temple outside backs in the wide areas yeah they're, they're, they're doubling up they're getting but well, singleton came out for the goal you're getting the likes of racer and, and whitcraft going forward and this i think it's probably the most dominant start to a game we've seen from U of H looking confident on the ball passing it well and getting into the dangerous areas good turn from Singleton she'll try her luck and it's headed clear by Phoebe Holland Moa Anderson another standout player this season number seven in midfield for Temple another younger player to build around Moa Anderson's from Sweden where's number seven here she is on the ball. To Eliza David. Ishiara off to the right. Sam Weehy with Whitcraft. And it's something we spoke about with Coach Jaime Frias in Houston this year. Seven injuries. We mentioned the goalkeeper, but several injuries in midfield. It's led to a lack of depth, sometimes three or four available substitutes this season, which is very rare in college soccer with the extra large rosters. Yeah, we definitely haven't seen as many as we've seen in the previous season, have we? They've, they've only used, utilized four or five players in each in, in midfield attack and defense. It's been a pretty much a solid 11 and then five or six coming off the bench. The Kraft wins it back. It's, it's, it's no surprise the amount of games these teams play in such a small time span. You, you're playing every two weeks. It, it takes a toll on the body eventually. Here's Sam Weehy. Wide for Reisa. Reisa in an offside position. I think Weehy is the one who's had to carry maybe the largest load. Yeah. A central midfielder who's gone 90 minutes five times. Very rare in college soccer. She went 82 minutes the last time out. She's consistently north of 70 minutes. The sophomore from Ohio, Sam Weehy. I think it shows the value she has for the team, isn't it? You've already seen that with the free kick. She's got bags of ability. She holds the ball. She keeps it. She has energy. She's, she is an integ integral team. A integral, easy for me to say. Integral <laughs> part of how this team ticks. Here's Weehy in midfield. Flips it towards the corner. Another run from Risa. Risa into corner kick. A dominant start for Houston midway through this first half. Goals from Weehy and Singleton. And now another corner kick. Yeah. Very good start, isn't it? The, the highlight is this game is not really any pressure, nothing to play for. They could have, the players could have easily come out and just gone through the motions, but they're, they're looking to make a, well, to have a good last last game of the season and play it very well. Third corner kick of the night for Houston. Matty here delivers, top of the box, clever one here. It's Weehy, top of the area, deflected out for another corner kick. They found Weehy from a similar spot where she scored the first goal. Yeah, we've seen this quite a few times this year, haven't we? Jaime Frias obviously oh, likes to practice the, the set pieces and they've, they've had a few tricky ones this year. Another one this time out to Weehy when you've got that, that, that strike. You've got to find ways to get her into the positions. Here we go again in the 24th minute. Another deflection. Houston asking for another corner kick. Instead, it's a Temple Owl goal kick. Two goals inside the first 11 minutes for Houston. We see another change for Temple. 
And head coach Nick Boquette. Sumaya Togba, sophomore from Maryland, comes in. And a break for Brooke Kane. Way he forward into Matthews. Well won there in midfield by Moa Anderson. On to the Owls, number 20, Samaya Tampa. Better from Temple, isn't it? Just a couple of two or three passes. First time they've managed to put them together. The Ambra was in an offside position. And the Amber getting back into position, great story. Three years has been her journey back from injury, initially a knee injury, and then a second knee injury. <laughs> Junior forward, getting a few appearances this season after a three years of rehab. Guys, fair play to for keeping going, isn't it? I've been there, I've been injured in my time, and it's difficult to, to come back or to have the, the will to come back. She could have easily just said, it's not for me. Far side throwing for Temple, trying to get back into this game, trailing 2 0. Last game of the season for both these teams. Johnson into the box. Togba as well. Corner kick to Temple. Yeah, a little bit of dominance from Temple. They're 2-0 down, but they've, they've showed a little bit of courage and character to, to get a little, little bit of possession, a little bit of pressure. And it's an opportunity. They've got some big big bodies there to try and attack this corner. First corner kick of the night for Temple. Towards the near post, still alive for the Owls. Saved by Woodward, is right on top of the goal line. Closest Temple have come tonight, but Woodward was very strong in front of goal. Yeah, Woodward's done well, hasn't she? It's, it's fallen very, very nicely for, for Temple. It's fallen for number four, Royzin McGovern, who's had the strike, and Woodward's just stayed strong. She's done well because she's in a situation where she's potentially gonna get a boot in that position. She's kept, her, kept strong and good hands from Woodward. Roisin McGovern with the opportunity. And Andrew, it's the last game of the season, but Houston continues to have a difficult time defending these set pieces. It looks like zonal marking oftentimes on these set pieces, and it feels like the opponents have consistently found the gaps in the zone. Yeah, we, we've mentioned this in one of the games earlier in the year. Um, I feel like when you play zonal, you're very stationary when the ball comes in. I think the one highlight of being man of marking the, the player is you you can you move with them and you you've got the same amount of momentum. When you're zonal, you you're giving the opposition the time to attack the ball and you're you're very stationary. And you can see there, none of the U of H players went to attack it, and it was the player from Temple, that McGovern, who came through, who who had the movement and the momentum. Would you agree? I think Woodward needs to be more brave there. I mean, that's three or four yards in front of goal in her own goal area. Uh, the problem is you've got zonal marking. It's hard to come around the bodies, you know? So if she comes out and she bumps into one of her players, she's taking herself out yep. of the game. Cara Lewis International Complex, University of Houston. Matt Peterson with Andrew Driver. 28 minutes gone. Houston leading 2 nothing. Sam Weehy with the fifth minute goal. Well taken, direct free kick goal about 21 yards away. And then Jenna Singleton on senior night, getting her fourth of the season to lead the team. That came in the 11th minute. Temple's best chance a moment ago from a corner kick. Good build up here from the Temple Owls. Anderson peeks over the shoulder. Finds a switch with Koritz. Good defending from Whitcraft. Koritz wins it back though. Weehee with Matthews. All sorts of space on the left side for Anna Reza. 
And we're tracking back off the bench. Sumaya Togba, twin sister, is Ayana Togba, sophomores from Maryland. Ayana number 18, Sumaya number 20. Do you think the parents were happy they chose different colleges? It's going to be difficult who to, to choose to go watch, isn't it? Yep. Two twin sets in the American this year in women's soccer. We had the three sisters with Tulsa, center back and two central yeah. midfielders. It's fun to see. Siblings and twins on the same team. Here's a cross from a good cover at the near post by Kyla Burns, the goalkeeper. Do you know what I like there? Race's confidence just to hit that. I think at times she gets into great positions and maybe a little bit indecisive. Tonight she's got into the area and she's just hit two strikes. And that, that opportunity comes from an outstanding little touch from Caitlin Matthews. She's just, the ball's come, she's shown the awareness, she knows Racer's is running on the outside of her, just a, a nice little touch into the box for Racer to run onto and hit. Tate steps forward all the way back. We'd be hauling under no pressure. Back with Kyla Burns. Speaking with Nick Boquette, head coach of Temple earlier today, he said the season hasn't gone how we wanted it to. Still at the point of development as a program, trying to build a foundation. He said we exist in this world where results matter. And he's frustrated for his players that they put the time and they put the effort and haven't been rewarded with the conference win yet. Yeah, and but it's always you look at the season and at the end, don't you? But as a coach, it sounds like he's been happy with his team's efforts. And when you get that, sometimes you just you're just not good enough. Um, sometimes the results don't go your way. Um, sometimes you deserve better. But as long as you're happy with the effort the team puts in, the character, that's all you can ask for as a coach. Change coming. Adriana Hudson will enter. Junior from San Antonio on a race and gets a break. We he asking for it in midfield. Instead into Matthews. Houston comfortable in possession tonight. Direct from Clark. Well cleared there by McGovern. Better from Temple, just nice passing, being a little bit more patient now. The onus is on them, isn't it? U of H have already got the two goals. They can they can relax that little bit. Temple have to, to force the issue now. The Ambrose Central. Too far in front of Koritz. Just feels like Temple lacks a little bit of that cohesion and confidence in the final third once they do get it there. Here is Weehee. Weehee good dribbling. And just ushered out by Moa Anderson. The Swede wins it back. <laughs> and a little bit of a slow fall from Weehee, wasn't it? I mean, she got that far with a bit of a, a lung burst and sprint. I don't think she, she'd cut inside nicely, just maybe needed to find that pass. A, a split second before the last tackle came in. Matthews wide for Whitcraft. Singleton wants it near the corner. This was a spot which led her opening goal. She cut onto her left. This time she crosses with the right. It's out for a corner kick. Clearance comes from Katie Cortens. A strange defending there from Temple, wasn't it? The ball came out to Whitcraft. Singleton peeled into that area where she's so dangerous. And none of the Temple defenders went with her. They just left her into that position to come into the box. If I'm a coach, I want I want McGovern to, to follow your mark, your mark the whole way out there, no matter where she goes. Caitlin Matthews at a Flower Mound High School in Texas crosses from the corner. One hand punch away from Kyla Burns did enough to go around the players to protect her box. A good ball from uh, Matthews, wasn't it? Putting the goalkeeper under pressure, but I think the goalkeeper did well in the end. Strong enough to, to, whip, to win the punch and clear the danger. 
Matthews shouldered off it. Free kick given here to Matthews. Elena D'Ambra called for the foul. Correct myself on the uh, officiating crew tonight. Emma Richards in the middle, Santiago Roa, Ricardo Ocampo, and Melvin Rivas, the assistant referees. Free kick for Weehee. In midfield, Houston leading 2-0 on senior nights. The, the re but we can talk about the, the officials later. One of them refereed my match at the weekend. Okay. Santi Mr. Santiago Roja. <laughs> this man does it all. Andrew Driver, commentator, former pro. Still, <laughs> still extending that career in the Sunday Leagues. I wouldn't say it's extending the career, and I wouldn't say it's pretty. <laughs> but, yeah, Santiago Roja gave one of our team a red card this weekend, and it was... It was a quick, actually it wasn't a questionable decision. <laughs> it, was, it was a Stonewall red card. No argument from you? Absolutely no argument from any of us. I'd imagine as a former pro, you don't talk to the referees much now in the Sunday leagues? No, I, I like to. Um, especially uh, actually talking with Santiago, he's a, he's, a real, he's a young guy and he's he, a referee that you can talk to when they make the mistake. I like to wind him up a lot, but he holds his hands up when he makes a mistake. He's, and he's got potentially wants to he wants to carry on with refereeing I would hope because he's he's a good guy. Better from Temple. That's a well weighted ball. The flag is up. Offside against Temple. I love the first touch though. From Samaya Tokbo, who took that so well, but from an offside position. Yeah, she she's been playing wide right, but she's just peeled in that little bit. Maybe caught the U of H defense off guard a little bit. Ended up a good. I think it was Addy Tate that made the, the saving tackle. I know it was offside, but first signs of Temple maybe being a little bit creative, making a bit of movement, trying to move this U of H defense into different areas. Settling touch to Embra. She was also in an offside position. She's maybe made that run just a couple of seconds too often. But when you're playing left midfield, you need to be watching down the line. She obviously feels like she's onside, but a couple of times just maybe give yourself an extra yard. Growing on the far side of the field for Temple. Temple growing the game, really testing this Houston high line. Very good entry balls, just... Yet to time the runs to perfection, a substitution just made. Eliza David out of Sayreville, New Jersey. There's a break for D'Ambro, who's had to recover from a few surgeries, a three-year return. Soccer family, her dad, the men's soccer coach at St. Joseph's in Philadelphia. Switch a field from Koritz. Starting to win the second balls, aren't they, Temple? U of H are clearing it, not getting comfortable possession. Garza Fermi does well, out to Hudson. Hudson good defending, denying the cross. Free kick is given. It's good work for Hudson, who's a forward who's deputizing at the left wing back position, filling in for Raysa here in the first half. Yeah, she's um, always brings the energy, doesn't she, Ariana, Ariana Hudson? Up and down. Um, we're used to seeing her as a striker, but she can definitely play in that those wide areas because she does have the pace to get forward and, and get back. It's probably a little bit more running that she's used to, but. I, I like seeing her when she's on. She, she always brings a, a lot of energy and she's exciting to watch. Anderson through midfield. Katie Koritz. Nice turn, top of the box. It's on for Temple. And just a touch. This year had to get it correct. Emily Cavanaugh, spectacular on the edge of the box for Temple. That was a lovely little turn from her, wasn't it? Ball into it. That's the turn there. Brilliant away from Gaza Freeman. 
and good defending in the end from Diashara because that was a, a real good goal scoring opportunity. First little real spark we've seen from Temple, isn't it? A little bit of creativity on the ball. Nice turn from Kavanaugh and she almost got herself a good opportunity. Final college game for Kavanaugh. One of four seniors who will play tonight for Temple. Out of South Riding, Virginia. Here comes Holland out of the back four. Hudson inside for Matty Gear. Weehy has all sorts of space. Sam Weehy for Houston. Diagonal ball towards the corner. In some ways, this is a perfect prelude to tomorrow. You have Houston and Philadelphia universities playing on the eve of the World Series between Houston and Philadelphia. Oh, it is, yeah. I actually didn't put that together. Ooh. Wow. You were telling me you were, you've been into the... Uh, I'm into the old baseball right now, yeah. It's, it's been fantastic, hasn't it? I wonder if there was any fans getting a two-for-one then. Nadia Kamasai enters off the bench for Houston, junior from Camarillo, California. Phillies in the World Series the first time since 2009. The Astros are back. Game one tomorrow night just down the street at Minute Maid Park. Tyler Burns will restart. Started all but one game this season after the injury. Cameron Stabline, the fifth year senior. That's the adage you hear from coaches all the time, Andrew. You have to be ready. We've seen it in the American with both these teams at the goalkeeper position, the expected starter both hurt and the number two given the opportunity to start all season. Yeah, it was a great opportunity for, for Burn and Woodward, isn't it? Maybe weren't expecting to get as many minutes. We've, we've definitely seen it with Woodward, the, the growth from the first game to now, it's, it's been exceptional, hasn't it? Um, just the overall awareness overall like positioning everything just has improved massively and i think woodward could be very happy with her, her season bowers has entered she knocked it to kamasa well defended by temple bowers partnering kamasa off the substitutes bench for the final five minutes of this first half matthews into the channel clearance comes from roisin govern mcgovern Captain's armband for the Irish center back. Woodcraft does well against Terry Jackson. Junior off the bench from New Jersey. Here she is back on the ball. Into the feet of Kavanaugh. Kamasa trying to turn, long touch, one back by Moa Anderson. Anderson looks like a good building block for Temple, just a sophomore for the Swedish midfielder. Yeah, she's just um, the little number six, and she gets the ball, just plays the ball around, always looking for the, for the link-up play, looking for the passes. She's up against it in there because U of H has three central midfielders, so she's always going to have people pushing on her, trying to press, so she has to be quick in possession, can't... can't Lollygoggle on the ball. Matthews. Well taken shot, but it's right at Kyla Burns. Feels like Temple is just inviting Houston to try their luck. Not much pressure on the ball when they get right around that D area. I think it's called zone 14. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what your reference to zone 13, 14 means, but it's near the box. Yeah, I think you're right, though. U of H, they've had that goal that snuck in for Singleton, and since then I think U of H has said to themselves, let's get shots on target. You see, you'll see goals if you, you put them there, but since the second goal, actually, Burns has, has done pretty well. She's held every every shot, but we know U of H has players that can score from there, so Temple really do need to close these players down. 
and Zone 14. Well, we were growing up, we called it the D. I don't know what you guys called it in Oldham, England. The attacking third. Attacking third right around where the ball is here. Yeah. But now they have zones all over the field. <laughs> I think there's too many numbers already. In, in reference to t t statistics, though, yes. right? Free kick given to Houston. One of the goal scorers, Sam Weehy, will restart with about a minute left in his first half. A well-deserved 2-0 lead for Houston on senior night where seven seniors will play their final collegiate game. Time. Just need someone there to tell Sam Weehy. You have all the time in the world, just turn and go forward. I think she was a little bit undecided and played an easy pass backwards when there was an opportunity to turn and go forward. You can see Nick Boquet talking with his coaching staff there on the sideline. Claire Scanlon, Maria Lloyd and the assistant coaches, volunteer assistants Travis Regner. Nadia Kamas up the left side, trying to find a clear way for a cross. Instead, she earns a corner kick, last touch by Phoebe Holland. Five, four, three, Quarter kick Houston, last five. second to this first half will tick away. All smiles for the Cougs, including the co captains, Emma Clark, Kayla Garza Freeman on senior night. A two. The U of H, they win, they won this game. If they played Temple early in the season and got a victory, you, you're right in it going into the last game. Underway in the second half, Temple is in black, Houston's in white, senior night from the Carl Lewis International Complex. Weehy and Singleton, the goal scorers. Temple's looking for a way back in the match. What are you watching for? Any tactical changes you might expect from either side? No, oh, well, U of H will, st will stay the same. I think they've uh, performed very well in the first half. I think Coach Frias will just want to see more of the same. Temple maybe will just start maybe being a little bit more direct. They've not had much opportunities with the passing game. Maybe just start going from back to front, put U of H under pressure and get some territory advantage. Where he commits the foul. Elena D'Ambra back on the field. She played most of the first half. Free kick here for Temple. They were hoping to get some of these tonight. A set piece threat, according to head coach Nick Boquette. We saw it from the corner, didn't we? That's driven into a good spot. It bounces in the area, and Woodward comes out to claim. Woodward throws it out. It's one back immediately by Temple. Here comes Raysa taking the space. Good recovery run there from Jessica Wallace. She's been a bright spot all year for Temple. At Bowie, Maryland, Archbishop Spalding High School, the Sophomore right back, slowing down on a racer. Yeah, outstanding from Wallace, wasn't it? That's a sh racer's made that huge run all the way down there, and it's the second time tonight she's got to the, the very end before she makes the cross, and Wallace has defended against her ex exceptionally well. But it's good play from U of H. It was Dia Shara that played in racer. The, the pace and the pass made a run onto it, and it's a lung busting run down the line. Well, worth explaining to the audience how the system is built. And this 3 5 2 for Houston and the first year head coach Jaime Frias for Benatar, Brett O'Connor, the coaching staff. The diagonal is on. It's Hudson. Has Singleton, has gear. The cross comes in and it's clear. And we've watched Whitcraft in Raysa all season. And Coach Frias has told us look at when we have the ball, think of it as a four forward formation with those outside backs joining the front two. So early this season, they didn't supply the width enough. Now they understand their role. Here's the low cross. Clear top of the box. Well hit off the crossbar. Put home by Singleton. The flag is up. Nearly a second for Singleton after Matty Gear rattled the crossbar. Oh, that was a great opportunity, wasn't it? Great strike from the edge of the box from Gear. It's just off the crossbar. And Singleton will have to see here if she is offside. Good play from Matthews. Ball into the box. Back to Gear on the weak side. Great strike. Singleton. Oh, I think the referee made the right, well, the, the Lions person made the, the right decision. But unfortunate for Maddie Gear, it was a good strike on her left foot. Really well taken. Here come the Cougars again, top of the box. Matthews to her right foot. Good fake there from 
Matthews as she drew in Moa Anderson. Yeah, um, Matthews on a right foot and Gear on a left foot. <laughs> Flipping the script Flipping here in the, the, script, the yeah. season finale. <laughs> the world's gone upside down. But uh, what was really good there is, um, we, are we in Australia? Uh, we he <laughs> running down into the right-hand side. But what she did so well, she lifted her head and found the pass into Matthews' feet. A, a lot of times you can get into that right wing area and just throw the ball in the box without looking. She lifted her head, she found Matthews, and really nice touch from Matthews, a bit unfortunate with the strike on the right foot. Yeah, so just to complete that thought on the 3-5-2 for Houston and the expectation for Whitcraft on the right, Grace on the left, they've been told by Frias and the coaching staff, you need to go, we have the ball, you're the width, you're the third and fourth forwards, you have to go. I have to think as a player, you have to love that responsibility. Your position is wing back, but you're treated like a forward when you're in possession as Raysa is here. Raysa goes for goal and it's well saved by Kyla Burns. Raysa's been dangerous all night. First time she gets a shot on goal and a good save from the sophomore Kyla Burns. I think it, uh, Correcto has been three opportunities for Raysa tonight. She's, she's got into that area numerous times and she's been so decisive. There's no one in the box for her, so she knows she's got to take a hit. This time she goes high. Good save from Burns. But well, yeah, Racer was going into on point on what you're saying. Those wide players in the, the a three five two have to get forward and need to, to offer that width. Eleven shots now for Houston. Matthews with the cross. And it's headed clear first by Roisin McGovern and then out to midfield. And I think for Temple or any opponent, it takes the scouting report in a real emphasis. You have to tell your back four. Don't think of them as an outside back. Think of them as a forward. Think of them as a wide midfielder because they're going to be coming at you all day. I, I, I played the position um, in the closing stage of my career and it's more attacking. Um, and the reason being, when you're defending in a 3-5-2, you have a central defender behind you. So even if you do miss the tackle or you do go forward too often, you have, a, you have cover behind you. So it is, it is more for me, it is more of an offensive player than... Um, a defensive player. I think one of the case in points, in, in if you go to the Premier League, you can see the likes of Ivan Perisic nowadays, Reese James. These are these are defenders on paper only. They're, they're the attacking options for their relative teams. Good cover there on the outside. From Another way to think about it, if you look at the field and you think of a 3-5-2, you have the three centre backs, the three central midfielders and the two forwards, they're kind of doing the dirty work defensively, and then the two wingbacks, tonight it's Whitcraft and Race, so they have the freedom to just not really worry about defending in the wide areas. Yeah, in, 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 on paper, the 3 5 team is set up to win the midfield. So you've got three central midfielders, three central def defenders, you win the middle of the pitch, and then anything you get in the wide area is, is a bonus. Here's Weehee, Matthews, edge of the box to her left. Matthews, wide. And Eresa was offside. Good line from Temple there. They kept it on the edge of the box. Because we complimented Eresa and Woodcraft, and I asked Jaime Frias, how much urging has it taken from you to get them to go and go and go and take the space? And he said it took a few games. Early on, I think it was against East Carolina, the road game, and the performance in Memphis, where they realized we're not getting enough in our attack, we need our outside backs to join those front two. Yeah, and, and that's why I've, I've mentioned a couple of times that Whitcraft eased the way in the first few games. Maybe it was a confidence thing, but once we got to like the fourth or fifth game, she, she just blew up, blew onto the scene, didn't she? There's Singleton crossing and it's cleared well. Like the confidence game, we got to see that pace and ability. Here's Hudson from the edge of the box, right at Kyla Burns. Hudson ended the first half as a Replacement, and then erase it, left back. She's starting the second half on the right side, and she's been dangerous. As she, as she always does. She always offers energy and, and pace, and this time a, a decent strike. Seven shots on target already for Houston. Singleton into the channel for Reza. And I think it's difficult for an opposition you pick your poison. If you go narrow to defend the three central midfielders, you leave yourself exposed in the wide areas. And if you put too much emphasis on the wide areas, like Brick Craft and Ray said, you're going to leave space for Weehee and Matthews. CC Cross on most nights to share it tonight. 
Yeah, but I think it's also worth noting what you don't what you don't gain from it at times. I think sometimes having three, if you play with a four three three or a four four two, you you have those wide players up there more often, and it's easier to find them. Like in in this formation, Whitcraft and Racer have to put in so much work to to get into those areas. You kind of miss out on just having the fresh wide players that can just have the all the effort going forward. And I think the disappointment for Houston this year would be the attack. 15 goals scored in 15 games. A team last year that scored more goals.
Temple up the left side, looking for a goal in this two-goal deficit. Trailing 2-0 here on the hour mark. Roisin McGovern, junior center back, plays it forward. Far side throw in, Adriana Hudson. Changes coming here for both sides. We see Alex Whitcraft return, the freshman. And a race that gets a break. Whitcraft from Grapevine, Texas at a Colleyville Heritage High School. Change on the opposite side. Elena D'Ambra goes to the bench. Jillian Allgood replaces her. Allgood to sophomore from Oklahoma City. Sam Weehy now for the Cougars. All sorts of space. Wide for Hudson, who's moved to the left. Adriana Hudson for Houston, enters the box, top of the area. Nobody there for Houston, now Temple can try and break. But first one back by Sam Weehy. CC Cross has entered a linchpin of the midfield all season, wearing 25 for Houston. Finds Woodcraft run off the bench. Woodcraft's cross is headed clear. Good work by Phoebe Holland. That's almost perfectly from Woodcraft, doesn't it? The ball is the box. You, I, I actually tried to head it. You saw Singleton running towards the ball. <laughs> yeah, it was almost perfect, just inches too high. High line from Houston. They deal with it well. A CC Cross has been such an important player for Houston this year. Junior from California. Giving a break tonight to allow the senior to have the majority of the playing time. Dishiera. All time step there from Addie Tate. Effort from distance. And why not, to be fair to Temple? They're coming up against these three Houston Central defenders. It's difficult to find the space, and they've not really had any anything worth of no strikes on goal. So why not take a, a, a dig from 30 yards, see what comes, comes from it? Yeah, a few moments in the first half, Andrew, edge of the box, couple called back for offside. You had the nice turn from Kavanaugh, a moment or two there from Milena D'Ambra. But really a team that has struggled to score goals most of the season. Here's a chance now for Temple. At first, a foul called, and a free kick is given. Moa Anderson pleading her case. Yeah, I, I didn't really see the foul. I think it was on CC Cross. The referee pulled it back. I'm oh, not sorry, Dishara. Up the right sideline, tended for Singleton. Out comes the goalkeeper, Kyla Burns. But yeah, from the game, you can maybe see why Temple hasn't scored many goals. They, they pass the ball around fairly well. They just haven't had any of that movement or dynamic play when the ball gets into the attacking half. It's quite predictable at times. Kavanaugh did well. Good turn in midfield. And there's that last ball. I think that's been on repeat tonight for Temple. They get 40 yards or so from goal. They try that final ball, oftentimes too heavy. Right to the hands of Woodward. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a predictable pass like this. It, but it all comes from movement, you know, like you need people moving. I think the best chance they had was when Togba came in from the wide area in more central and made a nice little run across the defense and that gave the opportunity. When you have those runs, that those passes are easier to make. Sometimes you can say about bad passes, but there's a saying, isn't there, that the run makes the pass. If you have that movement, it makes the pass easier. That was some Maya Togba in the first half. A good moment or two. Pressure from Weehe. Senior night for the Cougars. Final regular season game for Temple as well. Four seniors will play tonight for Temple. Seven seniors on the roster for Houston. Some of them injured, unfortunately. Injuries, a story of the Houston season. Kavanaugh, dispossessed. 
among the injured players, one senior, Riley Hausler. Here's Gear, the senior into the box. Gear to the right post, it just passed it from Singleton. What a pass it was from Maddie Gear. Not sure how she saw Singleton there. Nearly a third for the Cougars and a second for Singleton. That's just outstanding from Gear, it? Positive, she went down the line, used the pace, and the pass across to Singleton was outstanding. Like, absolutely outstanding. I think you're right, how did she know she was there? Singleton must have gave a shout. And I'm not sure if it maybe came off the, a little bobble before Singleton put it in the back of the net, but brilliant play from Gear. A turn of pace I didn't know she had, like really left it, put the defender under a lot of pressure with the pace. Now two seniors combining there. It would have been a beautiful assist for Gear, but Singleton could not hit the target. Now Houston comes back with Weehee. Tate challenging. Throw into Houston. Here are the senior numbers. Etched in white paint on the sideline. Addie Tate from Allen, Texas out of Allen High School. Good sportsmanship from Phoebe Holland there at Temple. I think it's an injury of a bit of a Awkward fall for Tate, wasn't it? She went down hard onto the onto the turf. First glance, it looks like Samaya Togwe gets the ball on that sliding challenge. Yeah, I don't think there was no malicious. I think it was just the pace that Tate was running that she fell hard onto a hip. And sometimes hurt the nerves in the back. Sporting play there. What do you call it, do you call it in America? Stinger. A stinger. Is that a, some more of an American football term? Yeah, more from the gridiron. <laughs> the gridiron. We've heard you over the years share your lingo, a sore one. <laughs> I've appreciated that. <laughs> it's always a sore one, isn't it? Nice to see Samaya Togba check on Tate after the challenge. Back in play here, 66th minute. Maddie Gear for Houston. It's been lively all night on her senior nights. Has earned a corner kick. Togba tracking back to defend. The eighth corner kick of the night for Houston. Good play again from Gear, wasn't it? Tricky. She's been the last two years we've watched this. She's been outstanding. Her and Caitlin Matthews are integral to this midfield for, for U of H. And they pop in with important goals. They're good on the ball. Here it comes from Gear. Headed back across and off the target. Janice Singleton, team leading fourth goal of the season. Made it to nothing. Patented left footed move from the senior. Singleton's missing that patented headband today, isn't she? Where Kane returns. She's She's in again. And there's a second for Singleton. Dancing her way back to midfield on senior night. All smiles. A brace for Jana Singleton. It's 3-0 Cougars. Kind of came from nowhere, wasn't it? Temple went as if they were going to play the ball short. Went long. It was a simple ball. She's doing the, the Lasso celebration there, I think. And Singleton's just finished very nicely there. She's just missed two opportunities. I was maybe thinking she was, she'd had enough goals. She didn't want any more. But this time, ball's fallen to her. It's a, a great finish from Jana Singleton. And smiles again on senior night. First time we've seen that lasso celebration all year. They're saving the best for last. <laughs> what for last so? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Something I expect myself to joke. I'd expect <laughs> myself to make. <laughs> expect better from you. <laughs> Three nothing Cougars. Singleton her second of the night. 
but in all seriousness, it was a, a great finish from Singleton. She missed an earlier one moments before, but this one's felt her, and it's just a great finish into the bottom corner. Were he tracking back to win it in midfield? Now it's gear applying pressure. Good composure there from Phoebe Holland. Frustration there. Came off Jillian Allgood, sophomore from Oklahoma City. Very open feel in the second half, Andrew. Yeah, the, the game is pretty much dead now, isn't it? But it's been it's been decent to watch. U of H have been passing the roll around very nicely. Temple maybe struggled to, to get things going forward, but it has been an open ball. There's the ball. It's about a great touch from him in the first place. And when the balls come across Singleton like that, she's not upset. And there we see that celebration. Hemi Frias looking on before this throw in from Whitcraft. We'll see Nadia Kamasat enter. High five from Frias. Could that be the end for Janice Singleton? Maybe a re-entry for the senior, but if not, it's a brace in her final collegiate game and hugs from teammates. Yeah, smiles all around, isn't it? And well deserved. She's, she's had a good season, Singleton. She's been um, probably the main threat up there for U of H. Especially, after, I've said it numerous times tonight, especially when she goes into those wide areas, when she peels out wide. And a good end to, to the season with a couple of goals. Yeah, it's difficult for Houston. We've talked about it a lot. The shortness of this college season, the single round American Athletic Conference season. In any other league, in any other sport, you have a two or three game slump. You can really come back from it most of the time. But in college soccer, this season, Houston had a three game scoring slump. They lose a few and they're eliminated from postseason contention. Especially when it's so competitive as well, isn't it? You go on that run, it's, it's difficult to get to get back from it. And especially when you throw in, you've got a new coach. When you're not with a new coach, you usually need a few games to get to how the team wants to play. And yeah, the season's so short, and it's, it's so short. But then all the games in a short spell of time. I think U of H have seven injuries tonight. You, you need everybody to be firing the whole way through. So it, it's difficult. It's a very difficult season. It's kind of like a mini World Cup, isn't it? You have all those games in a short period of time. Adriana Hudson walking back to midfield. I think the most disappointing thing for U of H was the fact that at the start of the season, they, they looked like they were coming onto a game, didn't they? They beat South Florida comfortably, I would say. And then it just kind of, and then there was a couple of games in before the conference that they looked great. And it was kind of like, I tell you, this team has an opportunity, just a slump at the wrong time. Deflected cross, goes out for a corner kick. Samaya Togba. Earns the corner kick for Temple. And this Houston team did seem a team much more comfortable at home. They had some tough road trips in there due to the nature of the schedule as Phoebe Holland Stands over this corner kick. And I think that's the next step for this program. It's going on the road and expecting the results. Oftentimes in this sport, the home team is the aggressor. The defense, the visiting team sets up more defensively. Maybe the mentality there is ex hoping for a point. You know, you've kind of lost the game in some ways before you even take the field. And I think that's the next step for this program, getting those road results because you beat South Florida, you go on the road, you drop a game against ECU, you, you, you tie against Memphis, then you have this critical homestand, you tie against SMU, you fall flat against Tulsa, you go back on the road after a two week break, you're on the turf in Cincinnati, you lose that one, and all of a sudden your season's basically over. Yeah, and I think a lot of it, how many times do we have this conversation? We have this conversation on professional soccer as well. Going on the road is so difficult, and I think in America it's even more difficult when you throw in the travel. On for Temple, the cross from the right from Allgood is too long. It's out for a goal kick. 
Yeah, that's going. The travel is so. I spent when you when you play four, two games a week, you play a game at home and then you have to travel. You, you don't get the rest for the legs. So you you're coming up against a team that's home. They've they've been training for the whole week. You've had two days travel. You've had a day travel. You've been on a flight. You've you've travelled by bus. Like you you the the body just stays sedentary, doesn't it? And it, it's hard to recover. Out to midfield, pressure is on. I asked, did the attacking players feel pressure late this season? I asked Jaime Frias that yesterday. And he said, they have felt the pressure, not necessarily to score more, but to take some pressure off our back line, especially if you can score first. And he said, we've had to chase the game a lot, especially on the road. If you look at the score lines, conceding first consistently, chasing the game, very difficult in college soccer to fall behind on the road and get something from that game. Yeah, when you're chasing the game, it's, it's always difficult, isn't it? And I think the U of H just haven't had, what, that five, six, seven goal scorer. You, you, you throw in five or six more goals and because they've been so competitive in every game. We, we've mentioned numerous ones, SMU, for example, where you, had a, you get another goal in that game. It's a, it's a completely different story, isn't it? So, yeah, you're just missing few goals from different areas. Last year, U of H got in the playoffs and they, they had goals from all over the pitch. Far side throwing for Whitcraft. Jaime Freya said he likes the growth of the group. And he said recently he showed them film from the first training session he had with them. He showed them clips, spells, possession, the quality chances that they're now creating. They weren't previously. A lot of players graduated from last year's team that helped build the history and last year's successful season. And he said the next step is getting more moments under the players' belts they can draw back upon in those tough moments, late in games, on the road, down a goal, looking for a win. That's the project ahead for Jaime Frias, Flor Benatar, Brett O'Connor, the Houston coaching staff. Yeah, especially the younger players this year. It's been an up and down season in so that they will have learned a lot from this year and the saying is you you learn a lot more from your defeats than you do your victories D'Ambra sealed off there by Reza D'Ambra commits the foul free kick to Houston Reza stretching out that left leg Elena D'Ambra back from injury after a few knee surgeries, three years of rehab. And the junior from Sewell, New Jersey. Raisa in some pain there on the edge of the penalty area. She was peeking over her shoulder. Let's watch this again. It's a, it's a sore one on, on the leg, isn't it? Just uh, She's planted it and the Ambra, I think, just kicked through. A little bit naughty. No need for it. I think Razor really hurt that. D'Ambra checks. On an eraser. One of many bright spots on this Houston team, Anna Reza. Last year, her entire life, a, a winger, an attacker. Asked to play left back by Jaime Frias this year. She accepted the role and she's had a really good season. Yes, yeah, she's been outstanding. She's as the season's gone on, she's she's gone from stride to stride. She, she gets up and down. She's got great pace in that left wing area. I hope that's nothing serious. She seems to be walking okay now. Kaylee Dressback. Sophomore midfielder. Enters the match. Out of Hoover, Alabama. Yeah, the seven yeah, seniors will restart this year for Houston. How do you take? Coach Free has talked to us about the evolution of this team. They asked to play the ball with the ball on the ground, more possession based soccer. Now they have to solve the problems closer to goal. Need more goals next season. First year in the Big 12 for the Houston Cougars in 2023. That shot is over the bar on the half volley off the left foot from about 20 yards away.
It's, it's, it's difficult for, for college coaches though, isn't it? It's, once you, you have a team, you get them playing your style and you've just got such a limited time with them to help them improve. But race, Bowers wins it up the right sideline against McGovern. Bowers has Kamasaw to her left. It's Maddie Bowers on goal, centers it for Kamasaw. Couldn't quite turn. Well defended in the end. It looked like Jessica Wallace on the back post. But a good break from the substitutes, Kamasaw and Bowers. Outstanding from Bowers, wasn't it? The pace. She opened those, those long legs up, got all the way down the line. The defender missed time in the first tackle, so it gave her a second opportunity. And Kamasaw, I think, just didn't time the run to perfection and lucky escape for Temple, but outstanding play from Bowers. Pretty good delivery there from the right. It was Alexa Sweats whipping it in for Brooke Kane. Kane heads wide, a sophomore from Philadelphia. Kamasaw wide. Whitcraft getting a chance on this left side. Tate. Out for a throw in. Another change for Temple and Nick Boquette, the head coach. Gabriella Johnson, she's a senior from Mays Landing, New Jersey, in her final college game. Jillian Allgood goes to the bench. Pressure from Bowers, she has won it. Maddie Bowers here for Houston. Good recovery from Temple. Uh, Anderson, wasn't it, coming back, good pace to get in. I thought Bowers was gonna open the legs up again, and this time she would have been one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Dominant display tonight for Houston. They have outshot Temple 15 to two. An advantage of eight to two in corner kicks. Here's Weehy, she opened the score and a free kick in the fifth minute, six minutes before Singleton made it two. Singleton out of the second here in the second half on her final collegiate game. So Taylor Garza Freeman, the left back last year, more of a center back this year. Looks like she's playing on the right side of the field here for the closing minutes. She's probably been telling the coach all year, get me back in that wide area. I'll show you what I can do, coach. Now she got a chance in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> and McClark did well there against Gabriella Johnson. Koritz with the throw in. Garza Freeman concedes a throw and good defending. Shaking up a bit after that challenge. Cross is dealt with well by Houston. Houston with some appeals for offside. Temple plays on and now the flag is raised. Potentially Brooke Kane there in an offside position for Temple. Owls are pressing more down two goals with just over 10 minutes left to play. Deshiara, excellent. Rosa Freeman for Nadia Kamasa. Good touch to the corner for Kamasa. Bowers is central. Kamasa picks her head up. To the top of the box, it's Weehe. And an excellent close, Jessica Wallace. She's been excellent tonight. Close down Weehee on the top of the penalty area. Brilliant from Kamasar, wasn't it? The, the pull back to the edge of the box. Not for the first time we've seen U of H do that today. They, they've got into the wide areas, which sometimes you can just throw a blind cross into the box. The U of H have put their heads up. This time Kamasar pulled it back to the edge of the box and Weehee just seconds away from being on time perfectly, wasn't it? She just got under pressure from Temple. Feels like Houston's followed a script tonight. They've gotten it wide and then they've played it back across the penalty area to the top of the area, and there's been midfielders arriving unmarked. 
yeah, when you've got the likes of Matthews and Weehee coming from deep, it's, it's a good um, tactic to, to employ. The, all three of them can, can strike the ball exceptionally well from the edge of the box. So why not just pull the back? And you know defenders are always going to look in the box. The defender's always going to go deep to protect the goal. So the late run's always a chance. And Weehee just, just under a little bit of pressure couldn't get a, a fine strike on it. Kavanaugh tried her luck from about 45 yards away off the mark. Woodward restarts with nine minutes left. University of Houston substitution in the 82nd minute on to the Clippers. Back to Kyla Burns. <laughs> Phoebe Holland. Kamasa applying pressure. Kamasa has won it. Burns is out of the area. There's an empty goal. Kamasa centers it. A touch there. Still in play for Houston. And the shot is blocked. Bowers heads it, and it's Burns back in front of her own goal. Oh, brilliant from Kamasa again, wasn't it? She's, she's rounded the goalkeeper and so unselfish. So unselfish to, to lift her head, play the ball into the box. I think Burns maybe got hurt when she came out diving. And I, I'm not sure it was in who, who got on the end of the, the cross and maybe just wasn't expecting the ball to come to her and just took a, lo took a little bit too long to, to have the strike. Yeah, I, think, I think it was Cassidy Huang who just came off the, off the bench. Nice diagonal, Bowers is in, the flag is down. Bowers' shot is blocked. Whitcraft was bursting in from the left side, it was Matthew Central. That was um, Kamasar again, three times in the space of a minute, she's set up an opportunity, this time a, a long ball over to Bowers, who got into a good situation, a good first time strike, good save from the goalkeeper. Here's, here was Kamasar, brilliant, rounding the goalkeeper. At this point, you normally see a striker panic. She's played the ball into Hung, who just couldn't get the ball out of her feet in time. That's Cassidy Hung, a freshman from George Ranch High School in Sugarland. Taylor Garza Freeman will throw it in. Dominance from Houston tonight. Here's Kamasa back to goal. Hong. Flag is up. Kamasa was in an offside position. Good defending from Temple. Yeah, difficult one that for Kamasa. She is looking along the line, but the, the play's happening so fast. If you, you just stray and it, it's the ball so close, you don't have time to look across the, the line to make sure you're onside. Kyla Burns, the goalkeeper, restarts for Temple. Hong, unable to settle. Temple with a throw in. Couple more changes. Kane gets a break. Lauren San Felice enters. Freshman from Woolwich Township, New Jersey. Our first minutes tonight. Temple threatening. They have plenty of black shirts in the box. Top of the area now. Shot blocked. Well done. Giara closed the space well. Phoebe Holland from distance, pushed wide by Woodward. Corner kick to Temple. Good save from Woodward. That was an awkward one. An update from Dallas. SMU has tied the game with Memphis. 1-1, 84th minute. Again, Memphis entering play as the three seed. SMU as the six seed. 
And we know that elsewhere, Cincinnati and ECU lead to a scoreless draw. Cross comes in, Woodward punches away. Comes out towards midfield. Dress back in and chase. Kamasa helping out at midfield. Ishiara all the way back. Tate moving well. Good to see after her recent knock. Woodcraft right in the middle of the field, picked up by Temple. Kavadar. Wide for D'Ambra. Jessica Wallace. She's been excellent defensively tonight. Matthews has Bowers. Flag is up. Bowers in an offside position. He's been very flag happy over there today, hasn't he? I think probably 90% of the offsides have come from that side. Just at times, not time to run this time, Bowers, but in that occasion, she just, she thinks the, the uh, defender's on her right hand side. She doesn't, she's not got no chance of seeing where she is to stay on side. But that's what happens when you, it's a sign that U of H have been playing those through balls, looking for put the attackers in behind. Houston offside eight times this evening. Over the top, and again, that's just the frustration for Temple. They're trying to get him behind. They can't get him behind very often when they get the ball back there. It's going too far to the goalkeeper or route for a goal kick. Yeah, it's just not. The U of H team, let's be honest, they've got a really good defense. Um, Gaza Freeman, Tate, and Clark are all outstanding defenders, and there's not much space. Cavanaugh earns a free kick. It was good pressure there. She won it for Dishiara. Yellow card shown to the senior. And a free kick here for Temple in the 89th minutes. It was a strong tackle. I think a little bit of frustration from Dishiara giving the ball away. It's not winning the ball. Kind of going out Zinedine Zidane style there. Dishara, yellow card to end a college career. Free kick here. Well hit, but wide of the mark. Roisin McGovern, the center and back. Captain, taking the chance. It was always rising, wasn't it, for the moment it left the, the cleat. It was going, it was never gonna have that dip you need. Janice Singleton, two goals tonight, one from Sam Weehy, a comfortable 3 0 lead for the Houston Cougars on senior nights. Hong commits a foul. Free kick here to Temple. Yeah, I think the referee acknowledging she made the mistake there. I think she gave it to U of H and then realized she'd, she'd gone the wrong way. Good referee in that, you know. Just, hey, made the mistake, all the way. Restart driven in. Bowers nearly won it, but it's one back by Moa Anderson. Here comes Temple, maybe one last push for the visitors from Philadelphia. Seven seniors going out in style for Houston, Emma Clark. Out of Christchurch, New Zealand, what a career she had. In Houston, Janice Singleton, the transfer from Missouri. Taylor Garza Freeman, who transferred from Utah State University. A break here for Temple in the final minute. Cross comes in. Dressed back with a touch. 
Out comes a very confident Haley Woodward to clean it up. Madison Gear, senior from Rockwall. Riley Hostler has been plagued by injuries this year. The senior from Lakewood, Colorado. Hattie Tate, senior from Allen, Texas. And Madison this year, the Houstonian who started her career at Oklahoma before coming home. Kamasa turning, closing seconds here for Maddie Bowers. Maybe one more chance for the Cougars. Bowers waits for the runners. The cross comes in. Cleared by Temple. And that will do it, a senior night victory for the Houston Cougars. Two goals for Janice Singleton in her last collegiate game. The other from sophomore Sam Weehy. And Houston ends the 20-22 20 